Yo! <laughs> What's going on? Welcome to another edition of Tezos Artcast. This is episode number seven, zero, 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 seven. We got good times in the house today. Oh, your, your mic's off. We got them muted. Am I back? Is the first happening? You're back. Yes, all right. Okay, cool. okay, we're good now. Woo! What's What's going on? What's going on? Oh, good times, man. I'm awesome. excited to be here, finally. Absolutely. I know, right? Uh, good times. What, what have you been doing that you haven't, uh, haven't been on the stream? Oh, man. I'm, uh, I'm back to real life. I've been, uh, I've been having to leave the digital realm to be active in, uh, in, in the human world. Uh, and uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a little crazy. It's been fun. Uh, it's been fun to be out there with civilization again. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, right uh i've been i've been just working i've been uh, and i have been going out to get back to nature a little bit i spent a lot of time in front of the screen uh and i've realized that i've heard it from somebody the kids are calling it touching grass and i think it's such a nice little little way of saying it and yeah just going out on the weekends getting away from the computer i disconnect from like my phone from everything and then you know do like a day out in nature and then come back to this Touching Come grass, I like that. I know. I um, gotta do. I gotta do more of the uh, touching touching grass action. Especially if we're gonna do something with uh, planting uh, uh, crypto cryptids out there, right? That's right. That's right. We Secrets. gotta start exploring the spots. <laughs> uh, Rexin is in the uh, Twitch chat. What's up, Rexin? What Hope up, everything's up? good for you today. Um, yeah, so I'm super excited. Uh, let's get some mellow vibes going. Um, super excited today. Got a special guest in the house. Um, we're gonna bring him in. Let's just bring him right now. We got Thor, animator, animator, graffiti artist, mad What's up, Jeff? enthusiast. What's up? What's happening? How are you, man? Can you hear me okay? I can hear you good. Can you hear us okay? Are we all good? Yes, perfect. Thor, Hi, good. This, is, this is good times. Hi, What's good happening, times. Man? What's happening, Thor? Cool? Yep, yep, you yep. know, my, my English is good, but I never speak it. So I will have to get uh, accustomed to speaking. Beautiful. Well, you're yeah, doing great no, so far. I may change my accent a little bit, but uh, I will find my, my groove in, in time. Get it. All good, all good. Uh, how you, how are you doing today? I love that. I love that soft purple behind you, like that yeah, lighting. Yeah, that's like. my that's my indoor lighting. Yeah, <laughs> it's cool. It gives a nice nice chill vibe. Yeah, <laughs> it's a uh, uh, two thirty p.m. here in Argentina. Nice. So I I just woke up. Ah, oh, okay. beautiful. <laughs> Let's get the day started. <laughs> well, nice. we got. I got my. I got my coffee here, so you know we're all just getting up. Yeah, what man. Is, what What is time? Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, uh, what? Um, so we stumbled on your art 
while we were browsing Hicket Nunk and yeah. specifically the Hayoka. Um, let me uh, let me share my screen real quick. Uh, boom, this little guy. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just immediately I stopped and like, wait a second, we have to have one. Uh, and then I read the little story about it and stuff. And I want to get into that, but uh, your style is very, um, I, it, it just has a very uh, unique look to it. And uh, so have, I guess I kind of want to know where, where your style comes from. Have you always been um, an artist since, since you were young? Has that always been a part of, of who you are? And yeah, I I pretty much uh, drew all my life. Uh, always had a, a a knack for for drawing. Uh, I'm I'm not much of a painter, you know. I I don't get uh, along too well with with color. Uh, <laughs> but I that's why I do mostly black and white. And uh, yeah, I know I I think this style comes mainly from. Uh, my memories of the Dr. Katz show. I don't know if you've seen it. Dr. It's a, yeah, it's a show about a, a psychologist that interviews comedians. It's animation. Oh. It's it's very old. It's from the nineties. It was so like I, MTV, right? Uh, I think I think it was when I was a little. I I used to watch it on HBO, maybe. Late night cartoon, I think. Yes, uh, and okay. they had they had this style that the lines were were always uh, squiggly. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and I remember as a child uh, that always uh, made an impression on me on me, and uh, I used to love that uh, dynamic style of the lines. Uh, later, when I watched it watched it again on YouTube. I realized that the line don't move as much as I recalled. It's more of a <laughs> selective memory thing, but yeah. that was the main inspiration. And and then when I grew up, um, you know, uh, mainly uh, mushroom trips and LSD <laughs> stuff, you yeah. realize that everything is so dynamic, that everything moves, that everything breathes, uh, uh, it's not so static as we see it in normal life. And that also was a big inspiration to do this type of uh, moving, breathing uh, textures and uh, uh, lines. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, now that, now that you've said it out loud, it all like, I'm like, yep. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> I, I feel like I've known this forever. I'm like, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything everything is vibration, of course. It all makes sense. Like, what are we but just vibrating atoms? Of course, the lines are squiggly everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Shiny, that's awesome. shiny, squiggly people. Yeah. yeah. That's what we are. And the, the text on this particular um, uh, piece that you read on the, on the podcast, uh, it's, it mainly comes from, uh, I used to do stand-up, stand-up comedy, Okay, I did it for like a year or two. I I didn't do it too much, uh, but uh, I I found out about the the sacred clowns, the Heyokas of the of the Native Americans, and okay. it, it was such a cool uh, concept to me because I always thought uh, clowns were something of the Europeans, you know, something more uh, me medieval, more. And to find out that the, they have this uh, backwards do, uh, way of doing stuff to contrast uh, the social uh, way of doing things, uh, I, I, I took a, a liking to that as a, as a, as a former comedian. But yeah. then I realized it's something that is uh, prevalent in, in all arts, you know, trying to do things in a different way. Yeah, absolutely. I, it makes me think of, uh, there was another, uh, when I was, when I was a little younger, I read, um, uh, gosh, what was it called? It's, um, the teachings of Don Juan, uh, yeah. the Castaneda. Yes, Castaneda. And 
I remember being like you saying, like in that mindset of uh, like taking mushrooms and, and acid and reading that stuff in that time in my life. And there was a particular uh, practice that the author had to do where he would be forced by his teacher to stand in awkward ways, like do really strange shapes with him, you know, with his body and hold it there. And it was a way to kind of shock him out of the normal way of life. And, uh, and that always stuck with me, this kind of um, the role that we can play in life as like artists and creatives of kind of jarring people out of their day to day with odd behavior or, you know, just things to remind you that you're, you're alive, I guess. If you yeah. ask me, that is the the original programming. The the that is the original programming of the artist. Like if, if you could separate people, I think that's what happens. You you wake up with this desire to show people that the world is not what they think. And this is not new. This is this. I mean, I've always bring up the Matrix. I always bring up uh, the butterfly dream. Uh, uh, I always bring up uh, the the allegory of the cave. All these things that tell you is not what you're seeing. It's something else. And the artist is the conduit, I think, through which we understand the parts of the universe that we cannot see. The stuff that we cannot physically bring into is the artist lets us know this exists, right? That's yeah. really cool. The challenge of yeah. reality. The Hayoka, the sacred clown, yeah. And it, it's always been a part of it. If it, It's always existed through culture. You've had jesters, you've always had, you know, uh, I was, I, I was uh, laughing about something with hieroglyphics. Um, uh, I'm not a hierog well. I guess it would be called hieroglyphics, but uh, not specific hieroglyphics. But history found uh, we found this graffiti, uh, and it's uh, the first depiction of Jesus that was written, like written on a textbook or whatever, the, as a as a drawing. The oldest one that we could find was actually uh, a graffiti that some kid drew, I guess, or some some student drew about another student saying hey this guy's really a, like really into this christian jesus guy that's popping out lately so he drew jesus in a cross with a donkey's head and like the other guy like <laughs> admiring him and saying like I, I don't know let's say his name was you know cassius oh cassius is such a jesus lover and <laughs> <laughs> so the so the original the, one of the first depictions of jesus you're saying was graffiti from a kid kind of making fun of of the christian <laughs> of the christian kid like, like hey that guy's really getting into that christian jesus guy oh what a <laughs> loser and he like drew a graffiti of jesus in a cross with a donkey head and the, the homie like looking at him like oh i love you and i adore you he's like oh cassius is a christian lover graffito <laughs> graffito uh, yeah yeah <laughs> uh i gotta say what's up to some people in the chat i got citizen b uh rexins in here uh, good to good to t see you guys in here. Um, uh, Citizen B said the sound is great today, so thank you for woo! that. And awesome, I'm glad we got it. Right, I need we need the setup that you got going on there, Thor. You got like get the microphone. You got the, yeah. That's what that's lit. Uh, also, we got uh, Trinity. Oh, Trinity Life Church is here. That's my pops. Um, nice. He's, <laughs> he's streaming. Uh, He's checking in today. Um, graffito. He's, he's being a stickler on that. Um, but oh, yeah. It's graffito. Ooh, I like that. Um, but yeah, so and speaking of graffiti, uh, Thor, and, and on one of the, on your profile, it mentions graffiti artists. So, so, you, yeah. so you were always drawing and stuff. And then um, how did you kind of how what's like the evolution there like you know is it just like in school and you started uh, seeing some of the hip-hop culture or what uh, no I started uh, with graffiti pretty late you know like uh, five years ago in oh, okay. two, 2016 okay and, yeah uh, actually I started uh, 2011 with uh, stickers you know uh, but I was kind of afraid of the of the cans of the spray cans spray cans uh, okay. I, I i had too much uh, respect for them 
But then in 2016, I, I started uh, trying out uh, the, the spray cans and uh, I really liked them. Yeah. Well, once you get the hold of how, how to kind of do it, it's, uh, it's, it's really fun. Yeah, absolutely. That's cool. Uh, so so you're, you're coming into uh, graffiti uh, later in life. Um, and did you always share your work like digitally? Um, ha have you been, did you ever make like printed work and give it to your friends or uh, did uh, you just have sketchbooks and stuff or, you know? Yeah, I, I always uh, sketched and draw, but uh, I never um, printed uh, any stuff, you know? I'm, I'm mainly digital. I, I, I really like the digital stuff. Uh, yeah. I started with uh, with this type of animation around uh, 2014. Mm -hmm. I was uh, it 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 mainly started because I I was uh, in a long relationship relationship you know like four years, and then we split we split up and uh, and I you know when you're in a relationship that sometimes you you kind of isolate yourself. And you're only with that person, and you yeah. stop uh, stop having friends. And I was in that kind of, of relationship. And then when we broke up, I was I was feeling really alone and isolated. So this uh, start uh, to start trying to animate and show my work on on Instagram was a, a way for me to start connecting back with the world. Right, right. Yeah, it was a sort of a social currency. Interesting. Sure. That's interesting. That's um. I always look at I, I've always looked at uh, at uh, at uh, at the networking that happens online as such a viable uh, uh, alternative, right? It's such a such a strong alternative when you culturally approach it the right way, and a network online can be just as good as having the friends outside and outside in the real world. You can find some really good support, and I've seen some really interesting happen. Uh, 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 some really cool connections online. Uh, I think we work together. Me and, and Jeff actually work together. And it wasn't until we actually started messing around with stuff online that we really, really actually had a connection. They were like, oh, man, we we should have gotten along a long time ago. We could have, we could have, been, we <laughs> yeah. could have been doing karate a long time ago. What is wrong with us? <laughs> so it's a, it's a beautiful thing that we that that we are slowly taking over the internet and using it for what it's supposed to be used, right, which is this creating these networks of people that support each other that 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 all have a, a, a common theme and a common thread um this is pretty cool so i'm glad that yeah, you found uh, it and also it connects with the real life as well because i started uh uploading these animations to instagram and then that also made me you know a lot of people uh, from my town uh, from real life you know so it's it really works both ways Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a, what it's like a synergy. Yeah. Uh, they, they can build on each other and, um, uh, and make things even better. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. We got, we can become famous by the way, because one of the people in the chat is definitely not a robot and <laughs> we can buy a few viewers and followers, uh, because of this, this person. So that's just, that's just great. Sorry to interrupt, but that was very important. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> that's that, that's that's a good sign for us. Uh, I think that, that when we're the, doing when, the right thing. Yeah, yeah. When, when the bots, bots start, yeah. When the bots show up, it means we're doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So you have um, these. So these are like so cool. Um, have you thought about or kind of doing some? Uh, more character animation kind of like the uh like the show that kind of inspired all this uh you know where you kind of take one of your characters and send it on adventures yeah i i actually started that uh last year uh, yeah if if you look at my instagram there there are a couple of uh of animations there that they are very short they are like four or five videos that are like uh, less than one minute uh, and they are two two characters that interact with each other. Excellent. Uh, but uh, it takes way too much time to to make uh, animation uh, by yourself. You know, you you have to record the voices and 
write the the scripts and uh, animate them moving their mouth is is really it's really hard you know right it's very time consuming right I work. I work. I, I found out I work best when when I have to do something, a, a project that is uh, not so so much time consuming. So I can do it in a couple of days, and then I finish it and it's done. You know, if I have to do it in a lot of weeks or months, I, I end up uh, getting bored, and I leave it. You lose interest, yeah. Yeah, I lose interest pretty quick. Yeah. I think I think that's true of a lot of uh, a lot of people. It's it's difficult to be kind of a solo artist and have to put in that kind of time, like with uh, with a project for sure. It, yeah, it, and, it, and it and it feels really good to to finish stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah, and it's also very hard to collaborate as well. You know, getting getting along with other people and. Uh, sharing a vision of what you want to do is uh, is also really hard yeah that is absolutely true uh getting people to work together in this in this world is it's a difficult thing uh and and you know what like i mean for myself um i always get a little bit self-conscious about my project that you know if i'm involving anyone else i assume that i'm a burden <laughs> and it's like, you know, I really could use some help, but I know you probably don't want to do this because it's just <laughs> like, it's just my thing. It's not that great. What you're doing is great. I'm, so I get a little bit, uh, I get in my head, you know. Uh, yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm doing better about it. I'm, I'm overcoming it, you know. Yeah, we're, but, we're breaking through, man. We're having the conversations, which is like the first step, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> but, um, I noticed also that you do uh, you do some freestyling and some and some rapping. Yeah, it's not actually freestyle. It's it's uh, written. Okay. Okay. I, I started in last year uh, when the quarantine started. Uh huh. And uh, I said, why not try some experiments? And uh, people send me words through the Instagram uh, questions. In, you know, in the stories when you ask questions, and I said, uh, throw me some words, and I will try to make something with that. And people started sending me words, and I started writing some some songs. You you could say some rhymes with that, and it it was really cool. It was it was uh, really fun, and uh, people seemed to really like it. Uh, I said, whoever sent you tetrahydrocannabinoid is a jerk. <laughs> no, but, but I like I like it when they send me yeah. hard words, you know? Yeah, you like See? rock with it, man. I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> now, 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 we previewed some of this stuff beforehand, but I don't think anyone in the chat has seen these. You, would, you, would you mind terribly if I, uh, if I played no, one? No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Excellent. I got it queued up. I'm ready. No one, no one will understand the the Spanish, but it's okay. I will. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Andy, Andy's Andy's in. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's get this bigger. There we go. All righty. Let me turn off what I got going on here. All right, chat. Prepare. So the so uh, again, just to recap, this is um, we've got. Uh, suggestions for things to use in the in the uh, in the rap, and then you wrote something, and this yeah. is this is the result. Okay, very cool. Let's do it. Caramba, no quiero estar en amba, allá le estar en casa en bata, se te extiende banda. 
Qué linda era Rosario cuando estaba desierta. No temo, vas a que el Kraken se me despierta. Te quiero y te extraño, dibujando me hace daño. Y si lo hago con vos, seguro sigo sí, un rato largo. Arquitecto y constructor de mi propio destino. A qué temperatura se funde el aluminio. El tranza no vino, no importa. Siempre habrá un pedazo de la dentro nuestro. Velas, rolas y saumerios, vibran líos graves que no salen en los medios. Siempre es la primera vez que tengo esta edad, es un truco viejo que acabo de inventar. Galaxia, te trae roca navica, tu espacio está para ocuparlo con las cosas que te importan. Me gusta el aislamiento porque cuando el resto de la gente vive como yo vivía siempre. That's my favorite line. La FMS, sus rimas lo merecen. Tengo que aprender a fritalear en pocos meses. Armo equipos invencibles como Sherry Kraus. Confianza infundada al estilo Donald Trump. Soy grower ateo, no tendré fe pero tengo fa para esos vuelos. Quéreme por lo que soy por dentro. Carne, sangre, órganos, tendones y yeah <laughs> now that beat too what, uh, what about that beat i found the the beats on the youtube okay yeah uh, there are some really great beats uh, out there absolutely uh, i love the line uh there's a line in there that says basically like uh, i like the quarantine because not everybody's living the way i used to yeah uh, and uh i <laughs> I don't know if uh, Jeff has heard me say this a million times and probably everybody that lives around me. Uh, the quarantine to me was like the cyberpunk apocalypse that I've been dreaming of since I was little. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yay, I get to stay home. <laughs> Done. Yeah, I, I also had a really good time during the, the quarantine. It's it's interesting, man. It, it was it's a it's a I feel like the self-reflective types really, really had good. The, yeah. the people that are usually very hard on themselves have finally got to take a break and go, wait, I need to slow down. I'm not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Uh, I think I just picked up one of your pieces right now. Oh, uh, cool. From Hick at Nunk. So uh, you'll see uh, I picked up that little guy right next to Bart Simpson. The 420 yeah. clock. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I nice. just picked that little guy up, yeah. Yeah, I did that for uh, for twenty. Yeah, uh, April twentieth. Tokenized, uh, tokenized, funny, tokenized. <laughs> Ooh, <well played. laughs> wordplay. That's <Nice>. right. <laughs> and uh, I, then I realized this is the only piece I I have that is not a a, a character. You know, this is not right. a, a face. Yeah. It caught my attention and also you uh funny enough every single clock in my house is set to that it has no batteries and is set to that time <laughs> it's always 420. oh yeah if you check the 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 tesos artcast uh, profile you will see i i already sent you the the piece for today oh excellent awesome um let me check that they got this all screwed around Ooh! oh my god that's so cool yes yes all right chat so this is the uh special giveaway today from thor he's been generous enough to mint us uh this beautiful uwu can you can you can you tell can you tell me about this did yeah I say I, it, did i say it right yeah it's you know the uwu is a it's a face like the the characters make a face okay yeah it's like an anime thing yeah japanese animation does an anime thing yeah <laughs> nice love it <laughs> <laughs> awesome heck yeah so if you want uh in the chat uh you know what to do collect just uh dm us on twitter or send an email actually this email is no longer useful i have a special tezos artcast email that we set up tezos artcast email save show it boom um yeah and we'll send it directly to you so that it doesn't get swooped up swept up by bots <laughs> <laughs> um Machines awesome. making machines. That's right. Um, that is so cool. Yeah, hey, I was so excited. I kept checking back. Like, ooh, <laughs> ooh, ooh. Um, 
question how's uh i, I have um how's argentina how's that i mean i know venezuela really took to bitcoin for a little while uh, i've heard some people in colombia tell me like hey yeah it's starting to pick up how's argentina doing with like crypto or is it is it a topic that you hear uh at random uh, or do you have to start it on your own no no not so much you know there is a little interest in some uh, people but it's really small it's not mainstream at all okay so you know the the government doesn't even tax crypto yet uh, oh, tell me more uh, you know recently there is one province that is right at the center of the country that is called uh, cordoba okay and they are uh, re they have recently started uh, a project to tax crypto mm -hmm. uh, mostly uh, crypto vendors and uh, and exchanges okay uh, but that hasn't even happened yet so it's pretty much uh, not uh, not taxed at all yet i i think it will be in the future gotcha right but uh, there there's also a, a, a big restriction on 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 dollars uh, on buying dollars uh, right now you you can only buy 200 dollars uh, a month you know with your pesos you, you people yeah. here uh, earn uh, argentine pesos yeah and they devaluate very quickly uh, like five years ago you could buy one dollar with 30 pesos and now you can buy one dollar with with 150 pesos okay yeah. so the devaluation is pretty fast and uh, people al always try to buy dollars but the, it's very limited how much dollars you can buy and right now there is like a loophole that using binance uh, p2p peer to peer you can buy tethers with your with your pesos from another person yeah. and it's like a undercover way of buying dollars but I, I haven't seen too much people doing it yet I think it will be more popular in the future and the government will will catch up will catch on to this and perhaps there will be restrictions uh, ahead okay right but there's how no did, way of of stopping crypto really right how did how did you no. get involved in uh crypto to begin with um as far as uh you know the nfts and everything and finding hick at nunk and um, i i started in the in the last bull run, you know, in the the end of uh, 2017, uh -huh. mm -hmm. I I don't remember exactly. I think it was through YouTube videos that I found out about uh, Bitcoin. Uh, so I was one of the of the people that bought uh, Bitcoin when it was at the peak in nineteen thousand dollars, and then I watched it crumble to oh, 3000 yeah <laughs> uh, i didn't buy i didn't buy a lot but uh, it was interesting to to get into that world and to find out i am not really a good uh, trader uh, <laughs> but uh, i i'm thankful for that because i later found out about uh, crypto art not so long ago you know uh, around february of this year i found out about crypto art and i said like ah oh, why didn't i found out about this in 2018 because i knew about crypto in 2018 yeah, right. and i knew about uh, crypto kitties and stuff like that but i i i did it didn't click for me you know the 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 art thing or the the nft thing it didn't click for me about putting my art into that I, I really wished I, I found out about it in 2018, so I could be an, an OG of the of the crypto art movement. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you Hicket, still are. Yeah, that's what I, that was uh, what I was going to say. That Hicket Nunk uh, sort of gave me that chance of be of being uh, in the first uh, month or or two months of of. Uh, of a big plat of what I think it will be a really big platform. I yeah, I, I think I, I see this growing a lot more. This community is definitely getting a little bit more tight knit. It's pretty rad. Uh, I, to be honest with you, Jeff is really my guide in this in this jungle. He took point on this one, 
and he's fucking, he's just clearing the brush. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I would have never <laughs> ran into you on my own. And now it's like, oh, really cool, man. It's, it's, it's been a, a pleasure so far to talk to you and like see what's happening. And and and, and as as the show gets bigger and bigger and as the show grows, uh, uh, I like that it's growing with the network. It's not because of advertisement or shit. No, no, no. It's, that it's an organic thing that's happening as artists actually come together, communicate, and work towards a common goal. And this self-publishing thing, it's the future, as far as I'm yeah. concerned. I don't want to see anything else but self-publishing, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. yeah. Taking our, out every every middleman. Yeah, yeah privacy, right. privacy, our rights, it's our data, it's our rights, right? Uh, I, I think a lot of uh, uh, European countries kind of started working towards that, towards that area, but, um, but there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of, conflict with what the governments want you know the the type of privacy and the type of stuff that they do all of this kind of connects all this crypto stuff all this kind of connects going back to hey it's our data let us do with it as we wish let us let us you know why is somebody else making money off of my art why is yeah. somebody else making money off of my my funny comments or my whatever you know that should not be the case yeah and, it, and it's really a, a a revelation for me at least to to be able to to sell my art in such a, a free way and such an effective way i i never imagined i could sell this type of of, of freestyle animations that i i just come up with them and i do them i never imagined people would buy them uh, for like for from me you know uh, it it was uh, it didn't get in my head that i i could do that And and it's uh, it's been a couple of weeks that that I'm doing it, and I, I am really fascinated with it. Yeah, Rexon Rexon in the chat says he's been in uh, NFTs for a month, and it's really crazy. He says it'll go far. Oh yeah. Um, and Citizen B on the topic of the uh, middleman says, yeah, use the decentralized tools at hand. Uh, skip the middleman. I'm a huge fan of that. Yeah, for sure, Citizen B. Um, um, if you're watching and you haven't made a comment in the chat, do so because I'm taking down names to do the drawing for um, for the doubloons that we'll be giving away in a little bit. Um, Rexon, you're doing just fine. He says, I don't speak English, and I hope what I say is understandable. You're doing great. Um, but yeah, if you haven't commented in the chat, just say, hey, um, with your Twitter handle or something, and uh, you'll be put in the drawing. Um, on that, again, that, that same topic is, keeps popping up, and I'll try not to harp on it too much, but again, I think it's important that artists keep talking about that, about making sure that if there are bridges being made between artists and getting artists on a platform like Hicket Nunk or you know whatnot, that it's a learning journey. So uh, there's there's people who can be a bridge from the non-crypto world to the crypto world, but it has to stay a bridge, you know, and a middleman can make a bridge, but what they often do is stop people in the middle of the bridge and start charging them rent and making Gatekeeping. them live in the middle of the bridge. And that's no what we No trolls. <laughs> no trolls. We don't want uh, trolls. So yeah, we should all be, if we're helping people across the bridge, the end result should always be get them on the other side and let them, you know, do whatever they need to do on the other side and help them, give them the right tools. So yeah, I, 100%. And it's good to hear it uh, be brought up. And it's something that has to stay in our conversations, uh, whether it's online or in person, is that That's reminding so artists who are new, like, hey, Don't forget, like the power of this is not just a new market. The power of this is the independence that it gives you as an artist too, you know. Um, so yeah, so doing doing chats like these and and whatnot is is good for that. Well, this is what yeah. it creates a culture. That's how you create culture by making these decisions as a group and saying, "Does this all work for everybody?" Yes. Okay. Cool. Let's move forward. Right. Uh, When when you stop listening to the everybody part is when you screw up. Oh, does this work for everybody? No. Okay. Well, that sucks for you. 
yeah that's, <laughs> that's when we run into issues so yeah i love that we're having this conversation because it does create that culture and it and if we spread that there's no stopping us you know this is the closest thing we've had to a new system of living in a long time as far as i'm concerned crypto the fact that art just jumped in to me is one of the greatest steps we could have taken because realistically art is what leads to progress it is it is uh the artist that encourages and catalyzes people to go oh i can do other things right uh yeah it, that's it's, the uh the hayoka again uh bringing yeah. the, the joker back into it right <laughs> and with, yeah, with tarantino right back into it beautiful <laughs> it's like the the blockchains are like so, so cold and, and boring you know the concept of the blockchain Mm -hmm. And they are really useful, and I love the the concept. Uh, don't get me wrong, but I think the arts uh, are bringing a lot of uh, symbolism and uh, narratives and uh, new concepts to it. And they're like infusing the blockchain with with color and shapes and, and oh. life. You know, yeah. it's like a, ah, a really I'll... rigid uh, structure that is being infused with with uh, with life, and uh, and it's like the these NFTs because we we already know that in the future NFTs will be used to pretty much any type of deed yeah, or uh, contracts, you know, whatever the hell type of thing. Yeah, uh, every type of so social interaction could be mediated by NFTs, but uh, that the first use case for nfts uh, is art yeah i think it's it's not a it's not random it's not a coincidence uh it's because of the role of art in in society that's right that's right absolutely uh, I am, I'm, I'm gonna well take said. a quote from you today uh infusing the blockchain with color is like the favorite my favorite thing i've heard <laughs> today sir well i like that that's right I hope that's, you don't mind, uh, but you're, you're getting quoted. That's, <laughs> that's cool. That's going on the uh, the official Tezos Artcast t-shirts. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> Stop! <laughs> it's over. I like it. Thor, Thor says. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> no, that's cool, man. So you you're doing so much. Like, I, it's you're doing a lot of creative stuff. Like, do uh, you ever? Think about going back to doing comedy. Uh, are you are you just an explorer by nature? Is that like what it is? Like yeah, you like I, to do a lot of things. I, I really get uh, hooked on 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 something for a couple of months or maybe a year, and then I kind of lose interest and go to the next thing. So right now for me is uh, NFTs and uh, and crypto art. Perhaps next year I will go back to comedy. I don't know. But I really like the idea of combining all of them, you know. Uh, I, I will start to bring uh, graffiti back into NFTs uh, uh, in the future. And perhaps comedy into NFTs, why not? I think everything can be combined. And uh, it's yeah. all artistic expression at the end of the day. Absolutely. That's 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 definitely one thing. Like my uh, my dad always has said, uh, you can never have too many certifications, and uh, if you want to work, you got to have a truck. Like you'll always work if you have a truck. And uh, <laughs> but the the certification things, you know, it applies to our interests too. You know, uh, we can see. Um, I think growing up, I always thought of, especially in my teenage years. Um, you know, I saw myself as being like very flighty, um, if that makes sense, like jumping from one thing to another yeah. uh, and, and never finishing anything. And as I got older, when you realize that, you know, I do have to finish some things, <laughs> <laughs> but everything is informing something else. You know, your graffiti is going to inform the way you do your animation, is going to inform the way that you write a lyric, is going to inform the way... It's all, it all feeds into each other. So it's, um, you know, if it's, it's taking the things that, um, making your, your quirks work for you, you know? Yeah. Every man yeah, is you, a blockchain you, on its own. <laughs> <laughs> Infused with color. Infused with color. <laughs> ah, yeah. I love this. Yeah. 
do, do you guys uh, see this NFT thing as, as something that is really accelerating time? Hmm. Because I like that. Yeah. I, I got in in Hicket Nunc, like, um, what is it today, 29 of April? I, I got in uh, the 10th, the 10th, April 10th. Yeah. Uh, so it's been like 19 days since I got in and started minting. But in my mind, it feels like months or even a year. <laughs> yeah. But, but for, for real, it feels like a year. A hundred percent. And I, I've, I've, I've reconciled uh, time because when we were when we were stuck at home in the pandemic, uh, I, like I said, for me, it was at the beginning, it was awesome. I was like, hell yeah, this is exactly what I've always wanted to do. Right. Then like two, three months in, I realized, oh, man, this is like I got a handle, but this is not where I want to be stuck at for life. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, with the. I feel like this because the technology is moving fast. You know, technology itself is moving. The processors and you know have sped up over. You know, I we I, I remember black and I remember like like just regular TVs, right? And then I saw up to now where I have a computer on my on my wallet. You know, we're all about that age. Uh, so for us, really watching technology speed up was part of where growing up. You know, yeah, the, the new generations were born with their phones already. They, they didn't have to see it happen. And it hasn't really improved except by maybe like size. But for us, we saw technology move forward. And you, I feel like, yes, that gave that when you look at this, Hickok Nong sped up a, a, a huge chunk of the self-publishing by creating the canvas, creating the, 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 the environment. And then we're just not trying to figure it out. We struck oil. We just don't know what the hell we can do with it yet. Yeah. <laughs> right. We're all sitting here like, oh, I'm sure this is going to be a good thing. But like, what do we do with it? It is now up to, like this groups of people that are forming together to figure out, oh, hey, we can make plastic. We can make gas. We can make this. Or, you know, I, I feel like that's where we're at right now. Yeah. It's not fully implemented at all yet. No. Uh, and the technology, the technology lends itself to to great uh expansion in, in many levels like you said you could you could take this to just be art printing you could wait till we have music wait till we have video you know video uh yeah. full-on video included once we have that self-publishing is basically t or it, it's 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 available to the world you're taking away the the ability for somebody to say hey i drew this and it's somebody else's work because you just go back and you're like no the first time i showed up on the internet on this blockchain was right here and this is the proof that i'm the one that minted it or whatever it is yeah uh, yeah, so, I think that's a. Uh, I think it's yeah. The uh, the time being accelerated is definitely a thing. Like I, I've, I'm experiencing that as well. Like, uh, just it's not even. It's it's hard to keep up, um, but it's easy to think like I've already missed it. You <laughs> know. Yeah. Like you, uh, I was thinking about this with my own. Uh, my own stuff that I've got going on, like my own creative projects. And it's like, ah, oh, why haven't I been putting my own stuff out there too? Like I'm focused on, you know, community projects. And I've always been that way. I always like let, enjoy uh, engaging with the community and kind of like a third party sense. And then I always am like, ah, oh, why wasn't I investing more time in myself too? And I was talking with Andy about this the other day and it's like, it's all right. There's plenty of time. Like as soon as you get into the crypto space, it's like, that's the world. And then you talk to somebody that has no uh, interest or no um, desire to mint anything or to learn about it. And, you know, there's still an entire world that doesn't know about crypto that doesn't, you know, see it the same way. So it's, I think it's kind of this, uh, almost like a hyper reality that we're living in. Like, yeah, we're, we're still <laughs> at the very, very early stages of, of, of kind of where it's going, but now you're, you're, you're talking my language now. That's the way I look. To see it. <laughs> uh, it, it does. If to me, it feels like I have to take two different realities. There's a digital realm in which I am one person and, and it's very, and again, it goes back to, we Tarantino back to my matrix analogies, which I always love to make. <laughs> which is that I have a persona that, that goes out into the real world and does, does things, but in the cryptoverse, in this digital realm, uh, 
time is completely different. Uh, that's why I always emphasize so much. Um, <laughs> that's why I always <laughs> emphasize so much. Just like, yes. Tell me more. That's that's why I always emphasize the the fact that you don't need to answer your email immediately, or you don't need to answer like um, uh, when you're in a forum, you you can just write your message and kind of forget about it. It's not like your phone is constantly calling your attention, and to me, that's a constant reminder of time, right? Uh, when I have to constantly look at my phone and I see the time, whether I'm looking at it or not, I see the time. Where I'm working at a computer, time is. Pfft, I could be hours or I could not, uh, you know, and not notice, oh man, I haven't eaten in like four or five hours. I should probably get up from here. Uh, so there is a time dilation. I feel like when you're in the cryptoverse, when you're focused on working on these NFTs and create, and, and I think that happens with art too, right? And art, uh, yeah. the idea, uh, Da Vinci wasn't like, never slept or something like that. That's the, uh, that's the story that Da Vinci slept like four hours a night or whatever. Hmm. And he was just constantly painting. Um, yeah, it really reminds me of uh, when I was uh, 20 years old and I used to eat a lot of uh, magic, magic uh, mushrooms, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, used to trip out a lot. I, I used to listen to a lot of uh, Terence McKenna. You, I don't know if you guys know him. Yes, sir. Um, he used to speak very eloquently about uh, time accelerating exponentially. Mm hmm and you could see that, like you said, in, in media and technology, for example, in video games, you could see that in the 80s with uh, Nintendo, now we have uh, PS5 and you can see the evolution, the, the acceleration, the evolution of, of graphics. Yeah. You know, uh, used to be like pixels and uh, 30 years later is like fully realistic with shading. And um, I remember um, playing tanks when it was two squares shooting other yeah. squares at each other. And I was uh, like, oh, you're playing tanks. Battle City. Yeah. Oh my God, Battle City, wow. Yeah, I used to play <laughs> that on the on the Nintendo. But uh, that uh, time acceleration seemed like something that was apparent. But now in, in, the, in the last couple of weeks, I am really feeling like it's going in a speed that is way too fast for me to catch up you know like like we we went from decades to a couple of years to a couple of months and now we're in a spot that acceleration is like weeks and for me at least how i feel it i, I know we are not at the singularity yet yeah but it's it's really weird how how much advance we are seeing in like uh like the neural neural link of the uh, of Elon Musk. I don't know if you've seen anything about that. I want to volunteer. <laughs> I've been trying to upload my brain into the internet since I since I found out the internet existed. So yeah, I'm in. Uh, now, Citizen B, uh, he says this is exactly how the dot com bubble felt. Mm, now, nice. I think we. Uh, I mean, I remember the dot com bubble happening but i wasn't uh i wasn't aware of kind of the full potential you know i was uh i was definitely uh just in a chat room probably or playing yes. uh or playing wolfenstein 3d on my computer uh on, on icq yeah yes. exactly napster, napster uh citizen b says napster yeah napster. Uh, and he but he also said that this time the products are way cooler and uh, <laughs> I have to agree. And it's really weird because when I first got into Hick and Nook like a, a month ago, when I first saw it, uh, it really reminded me of the, of the early days of the internet, you know, the interface. It's so, it's so an anachronistic the way they integrate in like an old style, like a 90s, late, late, 90, late 90s style of, of website with a, right. the really new implementation of the blockchain. That The other day I was, I was thinking that, that the blockchain is a really newish technology, but it could, it could have been implemented in like the year 2000. It's not uh, like uh, VR or something that requires a lot of processing, you know? It's not right, something right. that requires 
uh, huge uh, pr processing power. It's, it's just that the idea uh, took some time to develop, but the technology, we could have seen a, a blockchain in the year 2000, I think. And right. Hicket Nunc is sort of the representation of what would that uh, have looked like. I'm yeah, not, I, 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 I agree I with that, that, dude. I totally agree with that. I'm going to tell you something. I've had it in my head for a little while. And now that you've, again, you've said it, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and voice it out. Uh, hmm. I feel like there's a really interesting break between the people that learn how to use the internet, right, in the 90s and the people that use it before that. Oh, after that, I'm sorry, like the 2000s. I think there's a huge gap, right? And because that generation that learned it in the 90s is kind of coming into power, is coming into their 30s and 40s where you're an adult and you're you're less about the adventure, you're more about the settling down and kind of like, you know, creating a, 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 a what do you call it, an established life. As we're coming into power, we're, we're bringing it back to saying like, no, we're going to use the internet the right way. Let us show you how it's done. And I feel like there is is this regression towards 90s internet culture happening on the by the elders let's call them right the elders are like no 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 we yeah you have your facebook you have your stuff but let us let us show you how it was done let us show you how how an internet an internet is run where you can find actual information when you search for it where you yeah. can communicate with your friends instead of having a computer tell you with algorithms this is what you want to watch this is who you want to talk to and this is what you want to buy right so I think and, this is all part of that movement. And uh, also, yeah, like um, there was a comment. Um, Rex in, in the chat, he says, the NFT is like when you walk on a big square full of artists, you want to buy everything, except here the square is the whole world. I think that's a really cool comment because in... Um, yeah. In in the original internet, like we were connecting with people from all over the world. Um, but there was still a big learning curve. And I think that it took a little while, but you know, it took a little while to monetize the internet. Like it took a little while before you realized that this was a shot, you know, this could be a giant mall. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think we have a good opportunity right now. Um, that, the people who are creating the content and creating the art are at the forefront of everything yep. that hopefully we'll be able to speed past that part where the, the big companies figure out how to monetize it. Like we'll be, everybody will be looking back like, no, 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 no. Like we don't want uh, them all. An, an NBA NFT. Like, yeah. ah, that's so six, that's so six months ago. Come on what? now. Look at like, what happened. We're on, we're on peer to peer networks. Like yeah. I sent Shaquille O'Neal my token. Like exactly. we, we talk every once in a while. Uh, uh, that's what uh, with Facebook when Facebook tried to create its own uh, crypto uh, coin and everybody was like, what? Like, what? No. no, that's not happening. <laughs> like everybody just backed out of that project. Like now nah, you guys are idiots. Nobody's going to buy this. Yeah. That's a really cool thing about Iket Nunc. The, there is no advertising. So it's like a 2000 uh, website, but mm. it, it has no ban banners, you know? It, it, there is no product. There is no uh, enterprise. Uh, right. It's just, it's very horizontal, you know, very circular. Uh, if you keep the, 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 the dollar, I mean, or whatever, if you keep the, the, the coin in the community longer, it helps the community before it leaves and it goes to that centralized power, whatever that centralized power yeah. is. So it's really well, important to keep that dollar in the community. Although I, I do believe that uh, capitalism will take a really good hold of NFTs, you know, the, the, the top shots and all that, they are going to keep growing uh, bigger and bigger. But there is it's, it's really cool that we have an alternative to that in place with Hick at Nunc. right right that's why i think Hick at Nunc will grow immensely because yeah. the main thing is open source and it's open entry there, yeah. there are no barriers so anyone can get in and then if you do well or not it it it's it's because of your own way of doing it I will yes. give you, I'll present to you the Google, what I'm going to call the Google uh, uh, dilemma. 
So right now we're at a point where this can grow into something huge. You're saying that we, we all three of us, I think, believe wholeheartedly this is going to grow into something huge, right? And yeah. it will eventually become an enterprise. How do we make it so that they Google Creed? And I'm not, I'm only using Google as an example now because I want them to follow this, but uh, uh, the Google Creed of Do No Evil, which is how Google started, right? Hikagnonk is a very open source free. How do we make sure that the community enforces that? That the community learns this is how it started and this is how it needs to stay or as close to this as possible so that it may continue without becoming the next, you know, uh, the next centralized Facebook chat type shenanigans, right? Yeah. I, so I think, again, these conversations are super important. These, these, this little, uh, these little uh, community meetups where we're all getting to say what we're talking about, what we're feeling, and we're all building a, a, a culture. Uh, at, when the playing lit field is still level before somebody comes and plants their flag and says, well, this is now the, you know, whatever NFT for that belongs to Walmart uh, or NBA or what you're saying uh, mm -hmm. before that happens right now, the level, the, the playing field is level. And that's why we need to produce content and, 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 and continue helping other artists to grow. You know, I've always said it. I, I'll never be Neo in the movie, but I want to be Morpheus. I definitely want to be the guy that tells the guy, Hey, you're the one go get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got me. Um, now I do that, that talking about that, um, it made me remember there's a new platform. So, um, kind of in the background here, I've been scrolling through Hicket Nunk and kind of, uh, bookmarking some things, uh, to look at later. This is really freaking cool. Um, <laughs> but so we, uh, we'll generally, we'll check out, uh, Calament and Calament's, um, you know, another NFT platform, um, a little more curated. Uh, it's not completely gate kept. Like you have to oh. go through verification and, um, um, it's just a little bit, it's a little bit more cure. It's more curated. It's curated. Okay. Um, but it's not totally closed off and there's some really cool stuff there. How I did see that. Have you guys heard of Truzy yet? Yes. Okay. So, Truzy, I haven't, I'm going to, I want to, I want to look at the website with you guys, um, and see, see what we, what we all think. Uh, cause Truzy seems like from a marketing perspective anyway, from just seeing like their Twitter stuff and videos to be that next step to, you know, we only pick the, the best of the best, the elite, you know, Ooh. you're going to find only, you know, the the best artists ever here. So <laughs> now now that's a bold claim. And and I will say on like for for me like on the uh, from the Tezos art cast perspective, um, I definitely don't want to crap on any uh, any platform before it's out. Uh, this is all just like my personal like. It's just what it looks like when I see diamonds yeah. and watch bands. Like I'm concerned. <laughs> it's like the like the New York approach to NFTs, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So I wa I wanted to look at it a little bit closer uh, with you guys. Um, see if they have anything up yet, and get your first impressions. And if if I'm way off, like I don't know. It just it seems like that step that's coming where we're like, okay, Truzy, I see you. I see what you're trying to be. <laughs> I know what you're going to do. I got my eye on you and uh, you're not fooling anybody, but maybe you'll be really cool. I don't know. I, I, I already uh, have seen the site and I, I don't think I will be minting on Trissy because I'm not famous, you know, but, <laughs> right. but uh, I think it's, it's cool. I think it's a, it's, it's good to to have a variety on the Tesos uh, ecosystem. Yeah, uh, this is a really exclusive type of, of uh, platform mm -hmm. that is going to allow a very select uh, group of artists, and uh, they also seem to be aiming at uh, fashion and sports and uh, a wider scope. But I think it's cool because um, it's another way to get into setting up your Tesos wallet, you know, and, and start uh, buying stuff on Calamint or Iketnunk or 
I think like Iketnook itself, it's a really good uh, ecosystem because you have high price, you have middle price, low price, no price, and they all interact with each other very well. And you can think that way about the whole Tesos ecosystem or about the whole NFT or crypto ecosystem that uh, there are a lot of layers and uh, a lot of people will get in through one door and then find out about other things in the in the space. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, it's not the, the, the most attractive thing to us because we are in another... Uh, uh, wavelength of the of the spectrum, but uh, I think it's cool that there are other options, another way of, of doing things. Sure, it's a we have our own wavelength, but it's not the only wavelength. No. Yes. I think Heard. I think it. Uh, yeah, I, I like that this new uh, you know this this uh, growth in options. You know, the the more variety, the better to a certain extent. Uh, what's good about decentralizing power is that it is up to us, the consumer, to decide what's going to happen. So hopefully Trucy takes a hint from everything that's happening and it shapes itself according to the community as opposed to trying to shape the community, right? Yeah. Right. So, so uh, yeah. Um, or, or, I mean, if that's their thing, right? If, but if you're trying, if you're trying to, to I, I feel like if you're trying to, to appeal to me as a community, then then you have to focus on the community. If you if you want to be a selective, like this is like a, like almost like a selective gallery where we only do feature these artists. That's fine. That's your thing. But then don't come over here and expect me to be all over your stuff if that's not my niche. If that's not what I want to look at, you know, I yeah. like the the variety that we have in Hicket and on because, is I mean, it's all over the place. Uh, yeah. And I think I think yeah. that's important. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I, I hadn't looked at that yet, and I really wanted to. So um, it's rare. I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah, explore it's it. Brand, have... It's very very new. So and, and that was it. That's yeah. all that's to explore. I, yeah. Yeah. That was, that was it. It's, it's brand that. new. So. And the the cool thing about Tesos is you you can use the Open Minter, you know, to make your own platform if you if you have the the programming skills. So Absolutely. any anyone with some sort of programming skills or or a little budget to hire someone can do their own pl platform uh, for NFTs, and I think we will see a huge uh, uh, wave of of platforms of new platforms popping up uh, in the coming months and year years. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Citizen B says uh, he thinks. Hicket Nunk could be like training grounds for more curated platforms. And I get that because, um, and I know I, I've been kind of self-conscious about it lately, but uh, it just kind of keeps coming up. And that's, you know, looking at it like Hicket Nunk is like the open mic night that you go to and yeah. all different varieties of people are going to be there. And there's going to be the guy that's reading the same poem that he's been reading for the last six months, but it's very therapeutic for them and they're getting something out of it. It's great. Yeah. And then you're going to have the surprise where, you know, this dude from Argentina steps on the stage and <laughs> spits some rhymes and, uh, and then a little comedy after it and you're blown away. Um, <laughs> so it, and it has its place. And some of the, some of the people that are at those open mics, you know, they're testing their stuff out and they're sharing, they're engaging in community. And later on, they, they move on to more curated uh, platforms um, yeah. and diff different stuff. And it's, like you said, the different wavelengths. Um, the way that Hicket Nung has uh, organically transformed over the last month or so, because there's been, you know, there's been some changes to the site itself and you can see them. Uh, uh, I think uh, there's one or two things that I've seen uh, moved around. But the fact that it's being organic lets I makes me think that I, that Hick and Nunk will grow uh, with the community. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like they're being very attentive, and I dig it. Um, that's why I really dig the platform. Yeah, and yeah. the and the and the platform can be curated externally. You know, uh, Hick and Nunk is very is very bare bone and. Uh, there's nothing in there. There's no advertising. There's no dates. There's no uh, there's no follow button. There's no like button. There's no comments. 
But all of that can be done externally, you know, like we do it through Twitter or other uh, social networks. Like we find each other outside of Hickenmunk and we, we chat outside and we follow each other outside. And you can curate Hickenmunk from another website or from your own social media. Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting because perhaps you don't really need to have curation inside. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It could, it's just, again, I wouldn't, the way that we kind of scroll through, um, browse through the art and explore the art, um, whether, no matter where we're at, it's like, that's, that's how we, you know, met you and you know, the Twitter tweet, the retweets and, you know, finding stuff like whoever this guy is. Uh, I want to uh, listen to this in a minute here, but um, like that's all happening without that stuff. Like we're organically, you know, it allows for that organic uh, meetup and it's, yeah. it's really cool. I'll, I'll, I have to uh, take off in a second here, but I wanted to bring this out since you said singularity a little bit earlier. Um, left side of the brain, right side of the brain, right? One's supposed to be very logical, the other one's supposed to be very artistic, right? Uh, one of the things that has always stood out for me is, uh, I heard it somewhere and I don't know how real this is, but when the two hemispheres of the brain began to actually fuse together, they were actually separate at one point from what we see in our, in, you know, in, uh, in uh, our ancestors and what we've studied, that the, it looked like the hemispheres were separated and it began to fuse about, around a certain time. And when both hemispheres fused, that's when we began to kind of hear like the voices in our head, what we call God or conscience or whatever. We were able to have those real conversations with ourselves. Uh, and I feel like that's what's happening now. You have the Eastern and the Western world kind of like fusing together through the internet as if it was one big brain and it now had a connection between both hemispheres. And we're starting to see uh, that that singularity. We're starting to find those common threads that unites us all as a globe, as opposed to small countries and, and and small borders and all these little things that that were necessary for the for the older generations, but are unnecessary for us. We don't need to be centralized in order to stay alive. We can decentralize and con and up and then use all the resources throughout the world in order to make everyone comfortable, not just a small group, you know, in our tribe, which is. Where, where I feel a lot of society got their, uh, this, you know, where, where the, the, the social uh, construct began. Yeah, so, th that's really interesting because like, like we were saying before, I, I, I'm just thinking this with what you're saying, the, the blockchain is like the, the one side of the brain that is very calculating and, uh, and uh, structured. And now we have the other side of the brain that's very artistic uh, meeting it uh, yeah. in the middle. I feel, and and here we are, the neurons. Yeah. <laughs> All right, fellas, I have to take off because I got to go do some shenanigans, but it's been a pleasure meeting you, Thor. It was awesome talking. It's Easy. a pleasure uh, as well. All right, and uh, I followed you. I picked up one of you, uh, the 420 piece, which I'm super excited about. That's definitely going to make it into one of my laptops as a background. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right, later, guys. All right, dude. Later, later brother. Um, yeah, so singularity, freaking awesomeness. Um, I want to, I want to hear this droney floating tuning thing. Now, Th Thor, I do want to let you know, like, um, we usually hit about two hours. Um, so, you know, about 45 more minutes. Um, you're welcome to hang out. We're just going to chill and look at some art and keep talking, but, um, cool. you know, feel free to dip out at any point or just hang no, out no. for the entire time. It's okay, you're, it's okay. I, I can, welcome say, I can guest. say Yeah, I'm having fun, so. Cool. <laughs> um, Klaatu Barada Nikto said, thank you, good times. Bye, good times. Uh, Klaatu Barada Nikto, uh, I'm glad you spoke up because now I've got one, two, three, I've got four people in the running for the doubloons. And actually, okay, wait one second here. Um, I'm going to check this out. <clears throat> uh, I better just announce it. So we've got some other stuff to give away. So we're going to be giving away awesome 
NFT that uh, Thor here made for us. Oh, wait, what are you doing? Stop, stop, stop. Ah, sorry, I'm freaking out here. <laughs> it's okay. um, I had it a minute ago. This beautiful little babe. Where are you? There you are. Uh, so everybody's going to be getting one of these beautiful <clears throat> iwu faces. <laughs> it's so cool. Um, I actually then... I actually did this in uh, 2016. Okay. Uh, but recently I I touched it up a little, and uh, I I minted for the first time. Nice, exclusively minted right here for the art cast and for you guys. Um, so awesome. So we're going to give that away um, at the end of the stream. And then also uh, one of our guests from a former stream, uh, Gabriel Pazine, who's doing the um, Punkto uh, mini game, mini NFT game. Have you seen that, Thor? Uh, I've seen uh, images, but I, I think I, I haven't seen the game itself. OK. Um, he's also doing a thing called Tezos Pirates. Yeah, uh, I, li I like the I like the, the I like that stuff that aesthetic. I like it. Yeah, it's a cool aesthetic. And basically, what it is is you get one of these, and this is the doubloon, which is like old school pirate treasure, gold. Um, so you burn one of these, and then it generates randomly one of six hundred and sixty-six possible pirates. Or there's only six hundred and sixty-six pirates, but uh, there's like 75,000 combinations of rarity. And uh, so we've got like a little list here of all the different types. So you've got like the rarity aspect is made by their titles. And long story short, we've got five to give away. So we're going to do that uh, in a, just a few minutes. Um, so again, if you're watching and you haven't made a comment yet, do it. We're going to give away these doubloons in at noon. That's going to be the hard hard time. Noon noon o'clock. We're going to give away some Tezos uh, doubloons that turn into pirates. Um, <laughs> so that's fun. That was kind of a last minute thing that Gabe sent uh, to 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 share with us all. So so you burn uh, the you burn the the doubloon token and then yes. you get the pirate. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, so it sent, he, he sent he sends he sends it to you manually. He, that's right. Yep. Okay. Um, and that's the way that it's working with the Punkto game too. So okay. he, he, as an artist, will put up a card like, you know, a uh, clothing change, and then you buy the clothing change card, you burn it, you send him the transaction showing that you've burned it, and then he remints it with the changes and sends it directly to you. So okay. you kind of are you're interacting with him uh, through all of the stuff. So that's kind of cool. That's cool. Cool personal aspect to it. And same with the pirates. I think uh, again, he's got a generator that's uh, switching it up. That you know for that. But so he's not doing seventy five thousand individual illustrations. But he is sending them out manually at the moment. So <laughs> it's a lot to send right. out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, I want to see what this is. Let's let's yeah. see. It looks cool. You know, I'm in give, the, me, I, give me a minute. I will come right back when you okay. play the, the video. Okay, you want me to wait for you for the video? No, no, no. You can play oh. it. I will come right back. Well, you got it. Perfect. You got it. All right, y'all in the chat. Here we go. Let's see what this is. I'm going to try and make sure the volume's good. Giving away the doubloons at 12 o'clock. But you must speak up in the chat to get involved, even if it's just a little emoji. Ooh.
We probably won't listen to the full 20 minutes, but... All right, we're gonna speed it up a little. I'm curious where we're at around this time. Crip teams, Martin, what's up? Crip teams. All right, I'm going to jump ahead here. That is a 20 minute video. <laughs> he he minted this video in here. Yep. Oh, okay. Droning loop number three, recorded and created by Gustavo Pame, aka Calypsismo. For buyers for buyers, since Hen only allows 40 megabytes, I can send the original files. Contact me. This is the third of my droning loop series, a free improv session trying to control the sonic outcome of a stable system rendered unstable by manipulation. Music can be a presentation of choices already made or, in this case, a journey towards the wanted sound, the choices being the documentation of trial and error. All right. Heck yeah. I'll be this is like the, the most analog uh, NFT ever. <laughs> Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> uh, Citizen B said it reminds it reminds him of a band, Godspeed You, Black Emperor, um, and he sends a wiki article. Nice, quite acquired taste for sure. <laughs> awesome. Um, Got about eight minutes and we'll give away this doubloon. I just sent out a little tweet to remind people. Uh, Crypt Teams in the chat. Hey, Crypt Teams, AKA Martin, uh, was on the show a couple weeks ago. He does some amazing generative art. And uh, yeah, it was, it's like I said, but with the um, earlier, you know, I would never have meet, met so many people already. Like, Speeding up time, I felt, yeah, I felt like we've been doing this channel and this stream for for months and months, and it's been yes. like, you know, only a few uh, a few weeks, I think. So, uh, but it's so great to be able to just like meet so many people from all over the world. Um, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and and it's, find, I, finding a lot of like-minded people too. It's that's another thing that you know, I'm. Yeah, it's 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 really cool. And I, it's amazing how much the the Higetnunk uh, main page has uh, has gotten better. You know, like uh, when I first uh, saw the the website, it was like uh, March fourteenth. Uh, uh -huh. And I didn't get it at, at all because all I could see in the feed was like 
people taking photos or, of their food or uh, uploading old pictures or uh, quick drawings and and I didn't get what the point of that was because I was looking at uh, you know more established uh, NFT platforms like uh, Super Rare or Nifty Gateway or Maker's Place and so I had an, a different uh, conception of what NFTs looked like but it's amazing in how in such a short time the main feed of Nook it's gotten way better because now you can look at it and most of the stuff it's it's pretty good you know on the main feed yeah absolutely it's yeah. uh, and then they've got the different uh feeds too like the being able to do random and stuff too that's kind of yeah. nice and that that also could be because of the the recent implementations you know that if you don't have any hdao or Hadao, as I say it, uh, you you don't appear in the if you if you if if you don't have a, a, a it's not actually a verified prof profile because it's not verified by anyone. But if you don't have a, a complete profile, I would say, and at least a little bit of Hadao, uh, then your your minted work will not appear on the on the main feed. Huh. I, I read something about that. I wasn't sure exactly how it was working. Now, are you are are they? Do you know if they're still getting? Um, uh, ba 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 ba. Are they still getting? Are they still getting? Uh, HDAL when you mint? No. 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 Okay, so you have to buy it secondary if you. Uh, yeah. If you don't have it already. They only gave HDAL on the first forty-five days of the platform, yeah. so that's the whole March and. Uh, until I think I believe it's fifteen May uh, April fifteenth. Okay. Um, and I got into the platform, started minting on April tenth. So I only got like nine H DAO from my activity in that in less than a week, and then right. it stopped. Uh, so now, if you get in Higetnunk now, you won't get uh, H DAO from from minting or buying or, you know, there's a lot of collectors that got HDAO just for collecting right. because every interaction in the site gave you HDAO. Right, uh, yeah. So it's it's interesting the what the role of HDAO is going to be in the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also interesting how much uh, speculation is going around that now by people that have nothing to do with the uh, Iket Nunk. They want to buy it to resell it uh, later. And uh, it's interesting to say the yeah, least. For sure. I, I see uh, HDAO on Quippy Swap. That's right. Citizen B says you have to buy it on Quippy Swap now. Um, yeah. Quipu. I think it's Quipu. Quipu. Quipu Swap. Quipu Swap which I'm scared of. I put one Tez in <laughs> and I don't know what's going on with it. And I check on it sometimes and I'm like, I, I don't, I don't, I have to do like a really deep dive into it to understand yeah. what's going on there. I, I'm not like you, you mentioned earlier, uh, 2017 getting into the trading and stuff and pretty soon getting out of trading. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm I, the same way. I kind of, I, I stay but, back from it. I'm, but I, I only used uh, Binance at the time. So I yeah. really didn't uh, use too much tools around trading. I only used Binance uh, trading. And yeah. it's, it's interesting because now with uh, Iketnunk, it's the first time I have a, a wallet, for example. Right, and yeah. And I think it's a really important experience to have when you're getting involved in crypto, to have your own crypto in your own wallet. Right. Not to right. leave it in the hands of exchanges because exchanges can disappear from one day to the other. That's true, yeah. Um, we're looking at, uh, I want to say hello to I am, I am one to one. Oh, I think I said that right. I am one to one in the chat. Um, they just showed up and F Conway, 
I saw you in the chat recently. What's up? And he says, I recognize the stamp artwork up in the corner, Flygor, which is uh, Gabriel's um, artwork. Uh, the Tezos Artcast logo, F. Conway, um, that was the first uh, artist mint for the podcast. And uh, yeah, and he gave us his blessing to use it as our logo. So that was really awesome. Um, got a super fortunate. I love that stamp look. It takes me back to my uh, my zine making days. And I'm about to send out some mail actually uh, to some people. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. I'll have to talk about that another day though. Um, and it has one, a lot of uh, it has a lot of symbolism with uh, with collecting. Yeah, absolutely. The, the stamp thing, right? It's absolutely. about sending. It's about sending. It's about receiving, and it's also about collecting, collecting the the medium. Right. Yeah. Man, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, all right. So we're gonna go ahead and oh, one minute. Okay. Uh, I was just about to get into the collections tab. I hadn't seen this yet, so uh, of Hen, which yeah, seems really cool. Uh, the galleries, that's right. It's really cool uh, that the first gallery, it's called, uh, di di uh, how do you say it in English, Dil dil dilatated? Yes, uh, dil yeah, dilated. Dilated, dilated pupil. Right. So it's the first, the first gallery, the first collection of the site is... Uh, a, a Brazilian uh, psychedelic inspired. So I think that's really cool. Yeah, right? Absolutely. You know what? And I'm, that's one thing I want to do too. I want to get, I want to get a, uh, an art, art show going um, with, with the people that we've had involved on the show. Like just that, that would be so fun to put that, to put together. Ah, okay. So pretty soon we're going to, we're going to all, all be on this, uh, on this page too. Um, all right. It's 12 o'clock. Oh, I, I, I tried, I meant to get some dramatic music for this. Um, but I'm still very new to the, uh, uh, to the live streaming. So I did get this though. <clears throat> I'm going to have to, I'm going to do my own, uh, my own thing here. Um, let's see. I'm going to create my own music. Where'd my doubloon go? I got all this cool stuff. Posted. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I don't know. We'll just step here. Okay. Ready? <clears throat> prepare yourselves if you uh, prepare yourselves for the my pirate music. <clears throat> See. Mm. Yo ho, yo ho, <laughs> pirates' lives for me. Yo ho, yo ho, the pirate's life's for me. Okay, that's uh, <laughs> that was my dramatic pirate music for for now. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we're gonna give it away. Let's see. Okay, so what I've done, <clears throat> uh, I thought about this a lot, and I'm like, how am I gonna give away five doubloons? Um, I know how I give away the regular NFTs, and I'm still working that out to be more efficient and cooler. Um, but I racked my brain. I thought, like, I'm gonna get, you know, some kind of random generator to pull all of the names from the chat, and there's gonna be like a a thing on the uh, what do they call it with the balls, uh, bingo or yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have like one of those things playing. Uh, in the background and we're going to see this exciting video stuff but <laughs> i decided that i was going to go this route instead analog so, analog, analog I, have been, I have been taking down the names of everybody that's made a comment in the chat and i'm putting them in a hat and then i'm going to pull five names to be rewarded with five doubloons so I want to make sure I've got all of the names here of everybody that's been in here. Mm -hmm. So this is your last chance. I've got Rexin, aka Oris on Twitter. Uh, I am one D one, Trinity Life, Citizen B, F Conway, Klatu, Klatu Barada Nikto, uh, and Crypt Teams. Now. 
speak up right away if you don't have it, if you're not in that list, because I have just one more minute to find my hat. Um, where'd my hat go? Pardon me. You'll have exactly 30 seconds to gather one more comment that I can add to this list. One moment. Thor, the show, the floor is yours, sir, for one moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm the host of the show now, it seems. Uh, I don't even have the, the chat open. Which... Okay, help me out, guys. Say something in the chat because I don't know what to comment about. I am zero. I am on one. So excited. Yeah, you know, it's hard to be in this position. Uh, I've never, never been in the show before. I don't even speak English as my first language, and now I am the host of the show. Do you guys in the chat uh, use Hiketnunk? Okay, you're back. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, it doesn't look like we have any new entries just wanted to double check okay here we go i got the hat notice there's nothing in the hat <laughs> okay i just want to make sure that we clear this crypt teams you're going in folding it up boom klatu barada nikto that's your that's yours <sighs> F. Conway, you can confirm that that is you. I think people will, will trust you. You don't have to worry so much. All right. OK, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. All right, we got the rest here. And here we go. All right. <clears throat> Shaking it up. All right, Thor, you say when? Now. Okay. And the first winner of a doubloon is Citizen B. All right. <laughs> Citizen B says, never do this in any other way, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. And I'm going to decide this one stopping now. Boom. And we've got Trinity Life. Trinity Life, you've also won a doubloon. All right. Thor. It will be hard when you have like 100 uh, viewers. Yeah, I know, right? I'll need a moderator <laughs> to uh, be writing down the names and everything. OK, you no. let me know. When. Oh. Rexon, boom, that's three. We got two more. Looks like we got four more players. So here we go. A lot Thor, of you chances. High probability. Now. Uh, okay. I am on, I am 1D1, I'm on to one. <laughs> You've also won, sir, or ma'am, or person. I don't know, I always do that, like, okay, let's keep going. I am the one, one, and this is the last one. This is a big one. Tell me when. Now. All right. So the last one for the fifth doubloon. F. Conway. F. Conway, you are the final winner of the fifth doubloon to be given away on the Tezos Artcast. So thank you guys for tuning in on that. And uh, Please message us on Twitter. Um, I do have your names, but if your names are not the same on Twitter, it will be difficult for me to get to uh, 
get to sending you the stuff. So Twitter, hit me up and uh, send me your address and I will directly send those to you. And for, let's see who else was going in. Uh, rah, rah. Crypt teams, sorry, buddy. Klaatu, Barada, Nikto, sorry as well. I do have a small gift for you, so hit me up as well. I'm going to send you something special just for participating because we're small enough that we can do that. <laughs> but those doubloons are really cool. I, I wish I had one myself. Um, okay, that was fun. Um, yeah, and this is what you got, just in case you didn't know. You got a doubloon. Yes, Thor has been a great guest today. Thank you. I'm you thinking, can also uh, you can also choose to keep the doubloon if you like it, right? Yeah, absolutely. You do not have to burn the doubloon. And okay, so just in case, maybe uh, make sure everyone knows what to do with their doubloon. Um, you can head to flygorecom slash tezospirates.php um, to check out the full story on everything. But you're basically taking this doubloon and you're going to burn it. And then once you burn it, you're going to contact Flygore. And then Flygore is going to generate your pirate and send it to you. So the pirate is a randomly generated um, pirate like these. All different attributes, which make them either common or super rare. Um, and everywhere in between. So, But like Thor just said, you can absolutely choose to just hang on to this as well. Um, so yeah, very cool. Um, yeah, uh, I had I had a couple. Of, uh, I am so stoked. I'm I'm stoked for you guys. Um, I did want to check out. Um, I haven't seen the Fen. Have you seen anything from the Fen? Do you know about this project? Uh, yes, I, I don't know if I've seen it all, but I, I browsed uh, about. Okay. I've seen some stuff. Right. These are pretty cool. Like yeah. a little terrarium or something. You know, it happens with, with everything that is uh, 3D, 3D in Iket Nunk that I want to spin it around. <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm like, what, what is not it spin? <laughs> yeah. I know, seriously, so true. It's, it's really spoiling, spoiling us with the 3D stuff. Like I, I want to rotate everything that I see in the, in the, in the web that is 3D. <laughs> right. <laughs> Econ Rockstar F Conway, thank you. Um, yeah, I totally want to do the same thing. I'm not, uh, I don't have any 3D skills yet to implement, but if, you know, maybe Neither. someday. Yeah. Like you said, I'm, I'm like a big fan of black and white. Like, as far as my own stuff goes, if I do any illustrating or uh, anything like that, I just, I'm, I'm definitely more along the lines of black and white color can be kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Patrick Trezet, uh, apparent, he's, he was one of the first uh, artists on Hen where I saw one of these pieces and I got emotional because it was so beautiful. Uh, and there's something about it was so, so great. Um, and he's really good really just yeah really good very expressive yes very these are cool too these look like they play i face hashtag girl digital print generative art technique custom software and generative adversarial network alter ego collects thousands oh i see Thousands of thousands of images posted publicly online. 
These super high resolution digital prints are like tiny universes where the viewer can zoom in, get lost and discover glimpses of human lives. Ah, uh, you have the tool to zoom in. Yes. That's cool. Wow. Oh, that is cool. Yeah, because you, you remember uh, seeing those like when you you ever go to the mall and go into one of the art stores and they'd have like a collage of like Marilyn Monroe with all of her pictures. Or yeah, something. I remember seeing those for the first time and it's, you know, but not it was never this small. <laughs> I remember a, a friend used to do that uh, like in 2005. Yeah, he he gotten like a, a software that could do that. Obviously, this is done way, way better. Yeah. That's so crazy. That is very reminiscent of the early days of the internet as well. You know, the, the image uh, loading packets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One bit by bit by bit. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Because sometimes the resolution is so high in, in Higetnung that you will see you have that kind of effect yeah that, that loading by bits that's pretty neat we were talking about uh the magic eye uh art uh, last year or last podcast where um where you stare at it for a long time and it changes yeah. into something that was cool that that's that's due to make a comeback <laughs> yeah, I think I think you're gonna see it on Hick at Nunk pretty soon. <laughs> this is cool. Whoa! Oh, I think it paused. Wait a minute. Let's go back. All right. Prepare to trip out. Come on. That's the the Google uh, how how it's called the Dreamscape something like that, right? Where it really messes everything up. Yeah, it, it makes a lot of animal faces and eyes. Yeah, so creepy. <laughs> It's very like uh, Alex Gray. Do you know Alex Gray art? Oh, love Alex Gray. I, I, I'm a big, uh, big fan of Tool, which yeah. is, I think, how I found Alex Gray is because of Tool. It will be uh, very interesting as well to see all these traditional artists get into Hicket Nung or other platforms because we are just beginning and they will hop on later on. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I I agree. <laughs> Trippy. That's the thing of nightmares right there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think I have seen that in my nightmares before. <laughs> Some crazy orangutan beast yeah. coming to get you. That's right, I would not want to be tripping and see that. <laughs> I would definitely avoid it. Okay, smaller, it's a little bit faster. That's crazy. Um, this is done, uh, Citizen B said, that is done by the guy who first pointed out the enormous energy use of ETH NFTs. He minted oh. this on NUC the other day. Oh, cool. uh, right, Mimo Acton. Okay. I think his first calculations were kind of off with the... Yeah. Like if you minted one piece in the in the Ethereum uh, blockchain, that would consume like uh, leaving your computer on for like eighty years. I, I think that was kind of off. Yeah. Now, did Me you um, did you did you ever um, when you got started minting on Hicket Nunk, uh, Was that the first time that you had minted an NFT ever? Yeah. Oh, okay, so you, you're not coming from uh, minting on ETH and then coming over no. and starting to mint on Tezos. When I when I found out about the 
the NFTs in general, uh, I was watching, you know, like a super rare or uh, like I said before, um, known origin, that type of, of website. But uh, mm -hmm. I was gearing up to submit some of my stuff there because my stuff is kind of uh, simple, you know, the animation I do, and it's not like that uh, 3D, uh, full immersive, psychedelic, uh, really high effort uh, artwork. Right. So I, I was trying to do a more complex piece to submit to that kind of uh, platform. Mm -hmm. uh, but then when I found out about Hiket Nunk, at first I didn't get it at all, but like one month later in uh, the beginning of April, I, it clicked for me. Uh, and also the price, you know, because living in Argentina, I don't have like, uh, I, I do have it, but it's, it's expensive for me to mint something for $50 or $100. And perhaps the, the transaction backtracks and you lose it in a second. Right, yeah. So it's really, uh, it's complicated. So when I found out about Higenung, the the eco stuff, the, the ec ecological and economical stuff. So I, I decided to start minting on Higenung. And then when I found out about the community that was forming, uh, it was amazing. You know, because the the com as far as I've read on Twitter, the community on on the Ethereum platforms is good because there is a lot of friendships and a lot of connections uh, made over there. But it's yeah. also also highly competitive, right? So I'm really grateful that I I I minted for the first time in in Hicket Nook. Well, these are cool. You know, there's one guy that has been uploading some 3D stuff to Hick and Nunk. Uh, let me see, because I think he uploaded recently. Now, if you can find it, uh, you can share your screen if you'd want to. You don't have to, or you can drop a link, but uh, I can. I will, send uh, you, I will send you a link. OK. I, I put it here in the chat of uh, StreamYard. Yeah, you, yeah. There's a private chat or the, the regular chat, either way. Okay, I sent the link through there. Yeah. I re I recently found out about this guy that uh, does 3D sculptures, and I was amazed by the textures he used. You know, the the shapes are are cool and uh, they are great. Look, but if you look at at the texture work. Uh, if you zoom in, uh, yeah. you will see there's like very detailed uh, texture work. Oh yeah. And the, the designs are amazing also. Huh. It's like a bat, huh? Yeah, I don't know if it's a dragon or a bat. That's pretty cool. And he hasn't uploaded a lot of, of stuff yet, but the stuff that he has, I think it's really, really good. Yeah. That'd be cool too to have a, so I, I do a little bit of 3D printing and this is the kind of stuff that you could like, you know, make a little figure out of, you know? Yeah. That'd be pretty, pretty cool to have on your shelf. <laughs> Also for three D printing is uh, I like uh, Sleepy. I don't know if you know him. No. I can send you a link also, as well. Yeah, please. Uh, it's called Cryote. 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 He's really good. And he's uploading more freq frequently now. Huh. I want to check out this cat. Cat bat. The detail oh, yeah. is amazing. You know, the eyes, the, oh, yeah. the stone he has, the gem he has in his hands. Yeah, that is really cool. I think we are we are about to see a lot of uh, 
a lot of great creators get into the there there already are a lot of great uh, artists in the platform but i think we will see a a, a big uh, injection of of talent into the platform yeah absolutely yeah this is cool it's really cool within grasp it's called um what is uh rexin is showing us something oh man I, it's one thing that drives me crazy is I can't, I can't open these. Hmm. Let's see what I can do. Rexon, I'm going to try to open that in a minute. Um, if you have an object number, it's easier for me, Rexon. Yeah, uh, Citizen B says a huge inflow is coming for sure. There's a lot of people that uh, have tried minting on uh, Ethereum platforms, um, yeah. but they haven't had much success there because it's, uh, it's already highly populated and very competitive. Yeah. So they are great artists, but they uploaded something to, to no origin or some platform like that. And, they have it there like a month and it doesn't sell. So they lower the price and it doesn't sell. And the next step is coming to Hicket Nunk, you know? Yep. yep. Making, making more additions, making lower prices, trying to uh, do some price exploration that I think is very important to start out by exploring how much the the collectors are willing to spend on your on your stuff. You know, when I first got into Hicket Nunk, I, I set my prices really low. I put high number of editions, like 100 editions, and put 0 0.1 test yeah. to test out the, the price. And uh, as, as collectors started buying some pieces, I progressively um, raised the, the price. And I, that, I think that is a very good uh, tip for newcomers to yeah. don't don't come in expecting to sell a, a one by one a one edition piece uh, for uh, 50 tests if no one right. knows you if you don't Perfect. have following on social media if your art is not uh, well known yeah yeah i think i i think i i went the opposite direction on accident. you know i was i i mistakenly minted something for a hundred instead of ten tes, mm. and then I was like, ah, it's fine. <laughs> we'll see that what happens. The, that was the time when you set the price in in mutas, right? Yes. Instead yeah. of tes. <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. Uh, that was complicated. <laughs> yeah. And well, then I you, and then I changed it up, but yeah. you know, it's, it's just something to experiment with. It's good that you can cancel the swap and change the price. I don't know what's going on. I think uh, I'm having trouble with uh, these last two links. Um, I might have to just close some tabs ultimately. Mm. Too many tabs open at once. I sh it shouldn't be a problem. The network sometimes gets sl sluggish. Yeah. Yeah, when I, when I started collecting, I could see my collection but since the last object for object event, uh, yes. I cannot I cannot see my collection without it going haywire. You know, with, <laughs> right? My computer cannot stand the the processing the processing power it requires to load my collection now. Right. <laughs> because everything is loaded uh, fully. You know, there is no thumbnail. Yep. Everything you look is at the highest resolution possible. Which I love. Yeah, I, it's it's great, but uh, <laughs> it's hard on collections. Yeah, for sure. That's why I don't upload very high resolution. I wanted to ask you. So, uh, what is WebP? No, I I I, I upload. Or is it a GIF? I upload everything in GIF, and sometimes it transform it transforms it to WebP. I don't know why. Sometimes is, you can. Is, WebP? is it just another image file? Yeah, I think it stands for like web picture. 
because then you have web m that is web uh, movie oh okay okay gotcha. I, I don't know much about that format although i, I never research it but everything i upload is uh, gif or gif right and i i don't use a very high uh, resolution about 500 uh, or 600 pixels yeah 600 by 600 because if i use like 2000 by 2000 pixels it would yeah. take a lot of time to load yeah probably uh yeah take forever right and perhaps it's not the best decision because i'm not uh future proofing my profile you know uh, right i guess that's yeah that's one way to look at it but uh, i don't know i i will keep the originals in high resolution to perhaps in the future there will be a chance to send them or upload them somewhere else right This is uh, this is what uh, then then the Neil the Neil Cena <laughs> in the comments <laughs> put this in. I love that. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I think we're we're going to start to see a lot of uh, creative stuff like this like this thing you know like uh, yeah more sense of humor. Yep. <laughs> because until now the nft space is very much uh fine arts oriented yeah that, that it's it's really cool I, I mean we all love to see great work uh, great paintings great 3d work but i think we're going to start to see a lot of memes and uh, humorous yeah. stuff like this that is uh, pretty fun to watch yeah absolutely and uh <laughs> That's just hilarious. Um, it's necessary too. You definitely need a little bit of like, you need the humor. I like this. Exactly. Uh, who knows? Maybe the next uh, comedy set you put out will be uh, will be a, an NFT series. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I I don't know how to do it in English. I could do it in, in Spanish. That's all right because it's an international community, right? Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That's that's one thing we were talking about. Uh, also, uh, is like you know, um, being able to to branch out and I mean, meeting meeting people from around the world is awesome. Um, yeah, but being able to have some more, I mean, Andy, I, I was telling Andy like you know he's he's fluent in Spanish and. I floated the idea by him of like, hey, if you ever want to do like, maybe like a Spanish version, like of the show, like where, you know, I mean, I could just hang out and, you know, I, I'm down to just like, listen, but I, I think it's important, even if we're not doing it, that, you know, uh, different, different communities are served by different, um, yeah, similar things, you know, and so that's maybe, really... maybe that's a call, maybe uh, we, we should, Thor, I'd like to officially offer you the Argentinian branch of <laughs> yeah. Tezos Artcast. Uh, so you, you think about that because uh, yeah. you're a great host. <laughs> I will do it. But that's also a very Web 1.0 uh, reminiscence because uh, at the beginnings of the internet, we were all on the uh, ICQ or uh, IR, IRC chats. Uh -huh. no asking asl age sex location that's right uh, and we were chatting with people from all around the world and then with the web 2.0 you know with the social networks and all that we kind of closed up to our little bubbles you know in our in our cities or in our countries right and this is cool because there it's been a long time since i chatted and interacted with with so much people from different countries yeah yeah same here i mean yeah oh that's right i was gonna ask you okay argentina here's my here's my one thing that i know about argentina <clears throat> one, maybe one of one of a couple things but fernet bronca hmm. yeah uh, for, for net and coke 
Yeah, uh, th that's really popular here. You know, it's like yeah. a very local drink, especially in the Cordoba province that I talked about before. That's uh -huh. like the heart of, of, of Fernet with uh, Coke. And it's really weird because I know about Fernet uh, getting popular over there because yeah. of a podcast or that sort of thing. But most people here don't know that uh, Fernet is popular in the United States. Yes, and a lot of people in the United States that don't know that Fernet's popular in the United States. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, in the, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab something because I have to sh now. Wait, let me think. I have to show you something now. Okay, okay, okay. I'll be right back. I think uh, Fernet is uh, uh, Italian. It's like. Uh, for people in the chat that don't know what Fernet is, is like a mixture of uh, herbs uh, that is quite bitter and uh, you mix it with the Coke to make it more palatable and drinkable. But it's really popular here in Argentina. I'm wondering what Jeff is going to bring now. Is he, is he going to drink Fernet uh, live? Hmm. All right. I couldn't, I couldn't a, find... What is I that a real life doubloon? A what? A real life doubloon? This uh, the skeleton? No, no, the thing you have in your hands. Oh, it's like a oh. giant doubloon. Oh, oh yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, you have the what is that? It's a tray, like a carrying ah, tray. Ah, tray. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it says there in the in the below the name it says uh, it's digestive. That's right. Aperitivo digesto. Digestivo. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a big Fernet fan. I'm a, I have a bunch of coins too, but I couldn't find them. Anyway, that's my one, that's my one uh, link to Argentina, yeah. I should say. I think Fernet is originally Italian. Yeah. But it's really popular here in Argentina. It's like the, the most popular drink after, you know, beer or wine. Yeah, it's a uh, out here we um we would uh we would drink it together um in the service industry but um we would have like if somebody came uh and it was their 6th or their 21st birthday and they could drink legally it's like oh I'll buy you a shot yeah a shot of fernet oh what's that <laughs> <laughs> and th there's a whole website dedicated to uh your first Fernet, and it just is like pictures of people's faces when they take Fernet for the first time. But yeah, I think I think of Fernet like a, some. It's like a, a different version of a Jagermeister. Sure, sure. Because it's like a mixture of herbs. Right. Yeah. Better but than Jagermeister. But it's Might. more bitter and more Italian. Yes. Than Jagermeister. That's right. <laughs> um. That's right. Citizen B is out in Italy. Um, you would be f familiar with Fernet and Amaro. That's right. I'm a big Amaro fan. Um, well, Thor, it's uh, being about that time. Um, did you uh, did you want to include anything else, or uh, did you have anything you wanted to kind of plug, or? No, I. I could say I also have a Calamint profile if someone is interested. I, I'm only uploading uh, one edition pieces there. And it's like the a variation of my style in, in Hiket Nung because I had some pieces already made that are the same style, but include a bit of color. And okay. I, want, I want to keep my Hiket Nung uh, profile black and white Yes. So if you go to calamint.io uh, slash uh, user slash Thor, uh, 
uh, you can see it's the same style, but uh, they have little dashes of color. I love this. I love this green too. The uh, your Thor profile. I use the the Calamint green. Yeah. To integrate with the with the platform. Your block your blocky lettering here is great. Oh, That's yeah. very much like the Hicket Nunk uh, yeah, it logo. Is, it yeah. is. Oh, those are cool. Little splashes of color, right? Yeah. And so these pieces are uh, one uh, one edition, and they yeah. are more expensive than the ones on Hicket Nunk. So yeah. I, I'm I'm not counting on selling them soon, but I'm letting them just rest there until they find find a, a collector. <laughs> this is awesome. I love that. I love that he sticks his tongue out. Don't try this at work. <laughs> little little do 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 do. Whoop! Tongue fell off. He's tripping. Yeah. <laughs> yes, dude. Those are rad. Good vibes, girl. I'm so glad you brought that up because I didn't see that on your link tree. Is it on your link tree? No, I Not haven't yet. Uh, put it yet, but I, I will. I will add it. Cool. Yeah, because these are great. People definitely should see these. I, I think uh, <clears throat> when I when I talked to Gabriel. Um, of the punk dough and pirates thing. Like, um, he's also very much like minimal color, black and white, you know, uh, you know, it can be like a uh, cursing color. can be like cursing. Uh, you know, if you, if you use it sparingly, it has yeah. a big impact. You know? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, dude. This has been really fun. Thank you so, for inviting me, and uh, you can consider me now uh, a official friend of the show. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and we will. Uh, I'd love to have you back at some point. Um, Whenever you, you want, know, as as we evolve and and grow together. Um, sure. Yeah, I look forward to it. Me too. Well, well, thank you so much, and everybody in the chat. Um, this is this is please. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm going to butcher it. This is Bliatkes. Hey, guys, check out some MS Paint Neo Tropical Vibes at hen.link slash paint. I will. Absolutely. I'm going to save that link for next time. Um, come back and join us an, uh, next week. Um, we don't have a plan quite yet, but my work schedule is crazy. So probably next Thursday. But um, again, thank you guys so much. And this has been so much fun. Hopefully, uh, Good Times can join us again next week. And yeah, go buy some NFTs from Thor. And uh, so, at, at the very least, spread the love and yeah, share. All right? Great. All right. Peace, y'all. Bye, Ladies. everyone. Bye.